excited to be here today. Um, this is my first reading in New York. Thank you so much for being here and uh, coming out and um, having an interest in, in BDSM. Um, so, uh, normally I have some kind of performance that's involved as well, but we have, we have a limited uh, amount of time and um, so my, my memoir is called Breathe and I have a lot of anxiety and how I get rid of my anxiety is through BDSM actually. Um, it's how I get rid of all that anxiety that's in my body and so um, I'm going to invite someone uh, to come up and give me a couple slaps so I can fully get myself to you. So. Wow. Uh. Yeah, you can all wish that you're me right now. Yeah. which is a book that I think is coming out this month. So um, you can get that on Amazon.com. <clears throat> Room 402. I looked down at my sheet of paper, blue ink scribbled on lines in a journal that had, that had seen me through the last six months of travels. The book was bound in spiral coils and covered with the front and backing of a used book. The title was no longer visible under stickers that I collected over the past months, patchworked with my sexual politics, a shiny good vibration sticker, punk rock bands, and local music stores. I pressed the elevator call button and ripped the page from my journal. Here, I think I need, maybe I need to scoop this or something. Here, this might be a little, maybe, this will work. Okay. Um, I pressed the elevator call button and ripped the page from my journal, stuffed it into my back pocket. I remember the first time I met Josh. He was late and I was early. Even after taking the bus and getting a bit turned around in the industrial area of Seattle, I stopped a police officer to help me with directions to the address scribbled in my journal and scurried down the sidewalk into the dark carnival-like studio. Reds and purples popped out in the dark black surroundings. I'm startled by the sound of the doorbell and look up to find Josh and his partner Kat carrying photo gear in a cooler. Josh makes his way over to me. He's at least six feet tall and he towers above my body, which is still curled up in the chair with my journal gazing up at him. Short, dark, boyish curls of hair springing from his head, sprinkled with bits of gray, while a goatee circles his mouth, and I watch his mouth as he moves his lips, saying words that might be, you must be Madison, I'm Josh, and that's Kat. I'm sorry we're late, but I'm lost in a familiar presence that radiates off of Josh. I feel like I've known him before, but where? I'd never been to Seattle, and I can't imagine that we would find ourselves in any of the same circles in San Francisco. He wears blue jeans and a black t-shirt with a logo for what appears to be a BDSM event or a community group. I look down at his boots as he takes my hand to help me up off the chair, and I feel his calloused hands taking hold of me as I realize this is my father. A comforting working class blue collar man with manners that looked at me like I was a princess. Armed with rope and leather boots and a pickup truck, I was daddy's little girl. And my daddy wasn't going to leave this time. Wrapped tight in his ropes, grasping onto me, pulling at my flesh as I smiled, suspended off the ground, smiling, hanging upside down and purring with every touch that this stranger gave to me. It was safe. It was compartmentalized. This was work. 
I was paid to enjoy myself. I was an activist, revolutionary, revolutionizing porn by showing a woman enjoying herself in bondage. This was work. That's what I told myself as I signed the paperwork and asked Josh where I should take my girlfriend for a romantic Italian dinner. <laughs> the elevator doors opened onto the fourth floor, and I stepped into the hallway following the signs, watching as the numbers dropped. 414, 412, 410, room 402. I knocked on the door. I remembered the last time that I'd seen Josh. I hadn't tasted his ropes. Instead, he took photos as his dominatrix friend paddled and fucked me. I kept waiting for Josh to step in and rig me in a position before setting her loose on me, but he didn't. I was frustrated. But it was a job. I was only here for my job. If he didn't want to tie me up, I didn't need him to tie me up. But after the shoot, when I mentioned I was disappointed not getting tied up by him, he said something that had never really entered my realm of thinking before. You know I can still tie you up if we're not shooting. <laughs> It was like a light went off in my head. You mean this happens when a camera isn't rolling? <laughs> you mean this could happen to me when a camera isn't rolling? It seems so dangerous. <laughs> Tight rope pressed against my flesh and his body so close to mine. I was worried what might happen if a camera wasn't there to dictate our roles of model, photographer. And although Josh and Kat had arrangements for sexual situations outside of their relationship, Gage and I did not. Room 402. The door opened into a small but charming hotel room set up with a video camera on a tripod and a photo camera lying on the bed. Before I knew it, I was tightly cinched into Josh's ropes. The fibrous natural jute rope cut into my skin, sending me off into space. His hands felt so nice up against my eager and excited flesh. It seemed like so very long that I'd been waiting for this. Cat picked up the camera and clicked away, taking photos. And Josh brought the Hitachi magic wand up to my pussy. <laughs> and I couldn't control myself. I was screaming for more. More, Daddy. Please, Daddy. God, fill me up. Please, fuck me. I'm not quite sure what words fell from my mouth and which ones were simply simply swam through my nerve endings, but Josh quickly snapped a latex glove onto his hand and squirted some lube onto my already wet pussy. The Hitachi went back to my clit and his hand entered into me for the first time. He looked up at me. Is this okay? Mm, yes, please, is all I could mutter. <laughs> he teased my pussy with the wand, bringing it to my cunt and taking it away while his three fingers pumped into and out of my hungry hole. I could smell the ropes that bit at my arms and my legs, the ropes that made my chest harness grabbed at my breast with every breath as my orgasms kept peaking and crashing like intense oceanic waves. I could feel his latex-covered hand in my cunt, pumping and fucking me with pleasure, grasping for my G-spot, fucking my eager wetness. I collapsed, bound in his arms, cat still taking photos. Wow, I think that's a wrap. <laughs> he said, trying to keep his composure. Josh undid his ropes from my body, and I felt a little lonely in their absence. I was sad to see them leave. In my life, I kept work very separate from non-work, but I felt like some of those lines were becoming more and more blurry as the night went on. After the shoot, we drove around Hollywood, lost and looking for streets that didn't seem to exist and parking that didn't seem to exist, and finally settled on a dive bar where I'd nurse a beer and listen to the rain outside before we all made our way back to where we belong. Thank you guys so much.